Hey there, my name is Dylan and I'm going to really quickly and show you how to install a um, keyless entry transponder into a 2004 Honda CRV. Now, um, if you look down in the description, I've included instructions that are directly from Honda on how to do this installation procedure. However, it's a little bit confusing, so I figured I might as well make this video while I was doing it for myself. Um, you can get the parts, including the keyless transponder and, um, or excuse me, the transponder and the two keyless like fobs for fairly cheap off of eBay. Um, I got it from a shop here in Boulder, Colorado for around, I think $100 or so. Um, but it's definitely worth the money because it's such an easy install. So uh, first of all, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the install um, of the little transponder that you actually have to wire to the vehicle harness, but no worries, it's really easy. One second. Alrighty, so ignoring the fact that it's now daytime, uh, first things first, you'll want to disconnect the negative battery terminal from your battery. So um, you'll need a 10 millimeter metric socket and probably some electrical tape to go ahead and disconnect that. I'll go ahead and do that and be right back. Alrighty, with that disconnected, I always recommend that you tape it or something up here so that there's no chance that the electrical terminal can fall and somehow hit the uh, negative terminal on the battery because that would be bad. Um, also as a pro tip, if your hood stay doesn't stay on your car, um, A, this part and this little grommet right here are replaceable for very, very cheap, like two or three dollars. And replacing those will make your hood stay brand as new. All right, back to nighttime. Alrighty, with introductions out of the way, um, first of all, in your main center console, you're gonna to want to clear out whatever crap you have in here, inevitably. And then what we're gonna be going for is that little tabs, uh, tabbed access point in the back. Now, you can try and get this off with like a flathead screwdriver or even your hands, but I've done that before and it's a real pain in the ass. So what you really wanna do is get something like a paint can opener. This is really, really useful because it's kind of like a tabbed way to get in those little indentations and uh, pull it free. So I'll go ahead and do that, one second. Alrighty, with that free, you'll notice there's just one single uh, Phillips head self-tapping screw that we're gonna go ahead and um, unscrew. And another point for this entire uh, installation procedure, it's very beneficial to have a headlamp, kind of like I'm wearing. Um, there's some really dark, difficult to reach areas in here that we'll want to um, use this headlamp for. So I'll go ahead and take out the screw, one sec. Alrighty, now with that guy removed, um, and a note for that, do be careful when you're taking out that screw, because it's really easy to drop it into one of these holes, and getting that back would be an absolute nightmare. So, now that we have that screw removed, what you're going to want to do is reach your hand in here, hold firmly onto one of these holes, and pull this directly out. Now, that might be kind of difficult um, the first time you're doing this, just because this has probably not been removed since it left the factory, but there are no additional screws or anything like that. There's just clasps, so all you want to do is, again, so I'll put it back in there. All you do is grab this guy and firmly pull straight out, and then you can go ahead and put this guy off to the side. All right, so now with that part removed, what we're going to do is go in here, and you should see a clip right there. If that clip is populated with something, then that means you already have the transponder installed. If not, like in my case, then we're gonna have to get the connector out so we can install the transponder. So if you see, I've already kind of done this. What you wanna do is go ahead and cut through this blue tape right here. It's to the left of the brown vehicle harness. Cut through that and then go ahead and take it off. All right, so once that tape is removed, you notice that this cable, the cable directly to the left of the main vehicle harness, this guy right here. That's the cable you want to get out. And you'll notice when you're taking off the blue tape, it is connected to that green little connector right back there. Where the wire goes into that green connector is very uh, delicate, so be very careful when you're taking this off. But what we want to do is get that cable, route it through this area where the main vehicle harness connects to like this brown connector. We want to route it through this area and out so we can access it better. Okay, and you can see now how that's been removed, um, and you'll see how it comes out between where that harness is and where the brown connector is. There you go, that's our guy. And then, in the next step, you'll, it'll probably change to daylight, because I'm going to go buy the part. That's when we're going to go ahead and install it into the keyless transponder. Alrighty, it is again daytime, and we have the part. So this is the part I ordered off eBay from a shop here in Boulder, Colorado called All Discount Parts. Um, they're really, really nice, charging me about 100 bucks for this guy, and um, it's OEM, which is also always nice. So when you get the part, it comes with, by default, a instruction guide, but pfft, don't need that. That's what this video is for. Then you get two of the actual fobs, and most importantly, I suppose, 
the transponder. So, this little guy is going to go in there, as we were previously working on, with, this is gonna slot directly onto that tab that was shown earlier, and then um, the green little connector is gonna plug directly into it. Be right back. You little son of a bitch, go in there. Oh, you little bastard. Ha <laughs> ha! You fucking... Ha ha! The good click. Well, that was difficult. Um, but now, with the transponder installed and that little green clip all the way plugged in, we are ready to reconnect the battery cable and hopefully everything works. Ha <laughs> ha, she still turns on. Progress. So, according to the Honda documentation, it is first important to reset the driver's auto window feature for whatever reason. So what you wanna do is press the auto button down, all the way down, give it a minute, put all the way up, hold it there for a couple seconds, and now, bulb jungle, works perfect. Additionally, there's a reset procedure that we're going to have to go through, and forgive me, I'm going to have to look up what the hell it is. So, we need to make sure all electrical items are turned off. Okay. Start the engine and hold the engine speed at 3,000 revolutions per minute until the radiator fan comes on. And then we're going to let the engine idle for about five minutes with the throttle fully closed and with all electrical items off. I'll do that. Alrighty, and with that done, the system is now working fine. So, if I press lock, door locks. Unlock, unlock, unlock. Perfect. And that also works, but you know, don't want to do that right now. Um, do note that if your key is in the ignition, this will not work. Don't have a panic attack. You have to make sure that guy's out. Additionally, your remote should come pro uh, pre-programmed from the factory to work with that transmitter we installed. However, if it doesn't, there is instructions in the guide that very clearly go over how to program this guy to your transponder. Alrighty, that's about it. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comments. Thanks. Bye.